thought I would begin by just making a few general comments. Uh, as you know, the FCC for some time has been deliberating about how best to allocate, allocate rather, the C-band. Uh, 3.7 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz. Uh, it, we have discovered it will be very valuable for fifth generation wireless technology because it can reach a large geographical area and carry lots and lots of data. And uh, there has been a public and some private uh, discussion for a while of how best to, uh, to allocate that spectrum, if you will. One op op uh, option that was before us as policymakers is to do a public auction. The FCC, in my judgment, is very experienced doing public auctions of spectrum. I think you've done, um, I know you've, you've, you've raised $117 billion, that's rounded off. You've done 93 public auctions, and you've done them well. There has been a competing proposal offered by a number of our friends who are satellite companies, including but not limited to some foreign satellite companies, uh, some of whom are using the spectrum now. They have an association called the C-Band Alliance. Their argument is that the FCC is too slow and too inefficient to quickly allocate through a public auction the C-band, and that they can do it faster, despite the fact that they have never done an auction of spectrum, public, private, or otherwise. That's one of the subjects that I hope we can address today, is the speed with which, and thoroughness with which, an auction can be done. Uh, the C-Band Alliance has also proposed, in addition to their allegation that they can do it quickly, that they should get to keep all of the money. A number of investment bankers have weighed in on this subject. I've seen estimates as low as $40 billion dollars and as high as $60 billion that they would get to keep, they meaning the C-Band Alliance. I believe any fair-minded person would have to conclude that this spectrum is a strategic American asset that belongs to the American people, which is why the C-Band Alliance has asked for an order from the FCC to give them the spectrum so that they can auction it off and keep the money. Now, to be fair, I understand that the C-Band Alliance recently has uh, filed a new proposal with the FCC that would suggest they would give some of the money to the American taxpayer. I think of this in terms of my own state. Um, in my state, offshore, are enormous quantities of oil and gas. Some of the seabeds are owned by the American people. And uh, our BOEM on a pretty consistent basis, auctions off oil and gas leases to private companies to drill. They get, they get on behalf of the American people, because the American people own this valuable resource. 
they, they, they give the American people money, and they give them the share of the royalties. If I went to the BOEM tomorrow and said, look, even though you've done thousands of auctions and you bring in $30 billion a year, I can do it faster. And we need to, to, we need to, to be energy independent, and I can get those leases out to the private sector much faster. And I want you to, to turn them all over to me, and I will do it, and, 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 and I'll get to keep all of the money. If I made that proposal to BOEM, I suggest, respectfully, I would end up either in handcuffs or a straitjacket, or both. And that is the problem I have had with the private auction. Two of my colleagues have introduced a bill to require a public auction, which I, of course, the concept I, I support. What we're going to have to have some discussion, it seems to me, about the amount of money from those auctions, according to these bills, that would go to the public treasury. The, the, two, the bill introduced by two of my esteemed colleagues, for whom I have great respect, uh, basically, I think, would, would set a ceiling on the amount of money, 50 percent, that would go to the American people. Now, the obvious question becomes, who gets the rest? Um, Last night, I introduced a bill, a competing bill, that will require the FCC to hold a public auction of the C-band spectrum. It would allow for no less than 200 megahertz and no more than 300 megahertz of C-band spectrum to be auctioned off. It would ensure, my bill will ensure that incumbent C-band users will be protected. My bill will direct that all of the money goes to the United States Treasury and that $10 billion of the funds be specifically set aside to build out and maintain rural broadband, broadband infrastructure in unserved rural communities. Um, Chairman Powell asked, announced last week that he is bringing a recommendation to the FCC to do a public auction. A large portion will be auctioned publicly, transparently, everybody has equal chance, and a portion will be reserved for uh, continued current programming. Let me talk for just a second about ownership of the C-band. Um, my understanding that the current users of the C-band paid no money for it. They do not have a license. I'm not sure the exact legal term that gives them the right, the privilege rather, to use the C-band auction, but I liken it to a 30-day uh, month-to-month lease. And I think the property right here is something that we should address. But even if, even if they did have a license, they meaning the satellite companies, even if they did have a license, the Communication Act is very explicit in my judgment. If you look at section 301 and 309H, that just because you have a license, you don't own the spectrum. If you look at Section 304, it requires every licensee to sign a waiver. And that waiver says, hey, I know I have a license, but I totally don't own this spectrum, and I waive any claim that I have against the regulatory power of the United States because of, uh, of my, based on my prior use of the spectrum. And then if you go look at Section 309J, it says, quote, absolutely nothing about distributing licenses by auction changes Section 301, 304, or 309H. So if you have a license, you don't own the license. And you have already stipulated in writing, no matter what you think, no matter what your lawyers say, 
that at any time the FCC can come in and make modifications. That's section 316. They, the FCC, in its considered judgment, can make any modifications to any license it wants. All you have to do is give 30 days notice in writing, uh, which you do by issuing a notice of proposed rulemaking. Now, that's the law. And there's precedent. This is exactly what the FCC did back in 2007. You had a very successful auction of the 700, I think you refer to it as 700 megahertz option. Um, this isn't just my opinion. It's in the statute. And the FCC's authority here has been upheld repeatedly by our federal courts. If you don't be believe me, I found one particular case called Mobile Ray Associates versus FCC 457 F3rd, page 1 from the D.C. Circuit in 2006, and you can find plenty more. Um, a final point about litigation. There's $60 billion at stake here. Maybe less, but not much less. It's been my experience when government makes a decision that you get sued anyway. If somebody's happy and somebody's sad, you're going to get sued. And I fully expect whatever the FCC does, public or private auction, you're going to get sued. But good luck finding a federal judge who's going to issue an injunction and is going to shut this down. And I think the case law, um, in my opinion, uh, is, is on the FCC side. Um, and, and I guess the, my bottom line is, I know there are a lot of people, I'm very proud of the chairman of the FCC. It was a very courageous thing that he did. It shouldn't be. Following the law, you shouldn't take courage. But around here, it does. And I know some people are not happy. But my, I would respectfully say to the, those who aren't happy and say that the, that the FCC can't do it, you know, those who say it can't be done ought to get out of the way of those, those who are going to do it. And with that, I, I, I will turn to my colleague, Senator Coon.